Six. Allison Gilman says the city may drastically change its use of hotel motel tax money, and that could spell financial trouble for the Arts Center, the Science Center, and the Civic Center. Grocery store managers in Newton are pulling Hormel products off the shelves after UAW members threaten to pick at the stores. Now this. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. Bob Schieffer reporting. There is late word tonight from the Kennedy Space Center that investigators are getting closer to unraveling what caused this week's disaster in space. We have a report from Peter Van Sant. NASA's inspection team reportedly is zeroing in on a likely cause of Tuesday's shuttle explosion. It's called the blowtorch theory, and it's supported by the flashes seen just prior to the explosion. There are reports that the right rocket booster experienced a drop in power moments before the accident. Investigators reportedly believe the power loss may have been caused by flames burning through the booster and then through the giant fuel tank, triggering the explosion. Videotape of the suspect's solid rocket booster after the blast shows an unusual exhaust flow. Experts say it may indicate a hole in the booster rocket. NASA officials say they are looking into all possible theories, but tonight officials say they will release new videotape and still photographs of the explosion and release a statement on the focus of their investigation. Last night, searchers unloaded a solid rocket booster nose cone. Officials then learn it still contains several small explosive charges, which were then deactivated. Some kind of a release valve. Today, pieces of Challenger were picked up by fishermen and by Navy and Coast Guard searchers. This piece appears to be from the top of the orbiter. Beneath the surface, a mini robot submarine like this one examined a large piece of debris that some have speculated is the remains of Challenger's crew compartment. Each day, officials say the pieces they find on the surface are getting smaller. Let's go on. Let's find the reason for this tragedy and continue the struggle for fulfillment of man's highest dreams. More than 3,000 NASA employees, many part of the launch team, this morning gathered to mourn the seven dead astronauts. A wreath was dropped into the sea at 11.39, the same time Challenger exploded on Tuesday. Moments later, a school of dolphin rose nearby. It was a difficult morning for those who had been through an agonizing week. God bless us all. Peter Van Sant, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. The disaster, of course, has raised questions far beyond just what caused it. Questions as to whether the administration is spending too much on manned spaceflight at the expense of the unmanned missions that have been so productive. Whether civilians like Krista McAuliffe should be allowed on such dangerous undertakings. And also with a teacher on board, could such an event plunge the nation's young people into despair? Well, a CBS News New York Times national telephone poll conducted this week asked those questions. You may find some of the answers surprising. When we ask, for example, about continuing the shuttle program, an overwhelming majority, 80%, said yes. This comment, typical of the answers. It's, it's a tragedy what happened, but I think that uh, technology has to go forward. Something like this should not stop space travel. Uh, airline crashes don't stop people from traveling. It's an experiment, and things can go wrong, and that's how they learn. To underline just how strong support is now running, when we ask would people be willing to pay more taxes to keep the shuttle flying, more people said yes than said no. Those figures could vary three points either way. Some of that support apparently grows out of the tragedy. If we don't go up again, then they died for no reason. I think we should find a way to spend more money, actually. I think we're spending too much, far too much. Well, I think it's probably gone up one time too many. While people were clearly moved by the accident, most people concluded it was bound to happen sooner or later. We've had 25 successes and it's bound to happen. You're asking a lot of a lot of equipment too fast and too often. A large majority also favors sending civilians like Teacher McAuliffe on such missions. The 21st century is going to call for a lot of civilians to be in space, and uh, I think the best time to start is right away. As for young people, most of the very young seemed unaffected. About a third of parents with children five to eight years old said their children were upset, but 70% noticed no impact. Child psychiatrist J. Gerald Young told us today what really helps a child in sorting out such things is understanding how parents feel. The children need a model not only for the emotion, but how to articulate it and then confine it. Understandably, older age groups, those aged 9 to 17, knew much more about the accident. 81% told us they had seen a lot about it on TV. 
and 84% said they were upset. But by the same overwhelming percentage, they said the program should continue, and most said they would still like to travel in space if they got the chance. I thought that it was a great stepping stone into what can be a space shuttle mission that can carry people like you and me, normal everyday people, into space. By the way, we interviewed 1,120 adults and 224 young people. Krista McAuliffe's family said thank you today for the thoughts and prayers of a nation. In a short statement, the family said, it is our hope that Krista's spirit will remain alive through those she inspired. If the scene today at the Johnson Space Center was any indication, the spirits of all the Challenger astronauts are very much alive. Harry Smith reports. Young and old, they came here today to look, to wonder, to remember. The entrance to the Johnson Space Center in Houston has become the focal point for the emotions of an entire nation. You realize that it's not just this part of the country or just America. It's the whole world that feels the loss. The flowers from a karate club, from the King of Jordan, this has become every man's memorial, where NASA workers, tourists, townspeople, and finally an astronaut's family came and knew their grief was shared. It gives me uh, support and, uh, it's, and consolation. It gives us a very warm feeling that there are so many people that cares, and, you know, and just to see their sympathy, it makes it a, a little easier to bear. Hello. For those who hurt the most, a larger shoulder to lean on. Amidst the sadness, support. Harry Smith, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. And one other note, Soviet map makers who are making surface maps of the planet Venus announced today that they would name two of the craters on Venus for Krista McAuliffe and Judith Resnick, the two women who died in the space disaster. I'm going to look for a job, and if I don't find a job, I'm going back to Libya. If a Get this. Lists of people who eat Kellogg's cornflakes. Who still eats those? Charles Bronson. Eats cornflakes. So does Christy Brinkley. George Brett. The Beach Boy. All of them? George Benson. Robbie Benson. Eats cornflakes. Yes. yes! Good old Kellogg's cornflakes. They're great taste and solid nutrition gum is no surprise. Mmm. Diane Carroll. Jamie Lee Curtis. You guys getting hungry? Yes! The surprise is the people who eat them. Come take a trip in a 1986 luxury car built for the 1990s Cadillac DeVille. Cadillac comfort and roominess, of course. But this Cadillac offers more. It thinks, monitors its own functions, keeps its driver apprised of changing conditions. The most sophisticated engineering and electronics of any DeVille ever. But this technological marvel retains classic luxury. Now available with 7.9% GMAC financing. As of today, it is a crime for Americans to live or travel in Libya or do business with Libyan firms. President Reagan's sanctions against Libya officially went into effect. So far, they're not having much effect. Doug Tunnell reports. All that remains is for Muammar Gaddafi to proclaim it a total victory for Libya. On the first day of President Reagan's economic sanctions, a delegation of European businessmen opened new trade talks in Tripoli. Libyan officials invited the Western press into the chamber to see businessmen from Belgium and Luxembourg making hay, while American companies are barred from competing. Belgium, it's a little country. We need to export. And that includes manpower. The Libyans are recruiting British, Dutch, and Norwegian oil workers for jobs some Americans abandoned today. I'm not happy about it. In fact, I'm mad as hell about it. But I'm going back to the States. I'm going to look for a job. And if I don't find a job, I'm going back to Libya. The big American oil companies are finding loopholes in the president's order that may permit them and Libya to continue profiting from Libyan oil. 
At worst, the oil companies will protect their assets here until the storm blows over. If Americans want to come back to Libya, authorities at Tripoli Airport will not stamp a visa into an American passport and leave any permanent record of their arrival here. You can still pay for a hotel room with U.S. dollars and buy a ticket out of Libya to Western Europe or elsewhere using any one of a number of well-known American credit cards. Libya believes it is facing down a superpower a hundred times its size. America has so far played to Gaddafi's strongest suit, his flair for melodrama and the absurd. Doug Tennell, CBS News, Tripoli. Pope John Paul began his tour of India today. He laid a wreath at the memorial to Mahatma Gandhi in New Delhi, first taking off his shoes in traditional Hindu style. Later, he celebrated mass before 25,000 Indian Catholics at a tightly guarded stadium. Some militant Hindus have protested the Pope's pastoral visit to a country where there were about 600 million Hindus, only 13 million Catholics. You're on your way. The world is opening its door. I never understood when Mom made me clean my plate because there were places where kids were starving. Now I'm about to walk into a Dow laboratory to work on new ways to help grow more and better grain for those kids who so desperately need it. Yes, you can make a difference in what tomorrow brings. I can't wait. Coldwell Banker is America's largest full-service real estate company. And these days, you don't get bigger unless you do it better. Coldwell Banker, the home sellers, a member of the Sears Financial Network. If you're 55 and retired, you can save on all state homeowners and car insurance. Leave it to the good hands, people. If you're not 55 and retired, quit your job and get old. You're in good hands with all state. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Hope you like sugar, because this box contains not one, not two, but six added teaspoons. This has ten, and this, eighteen. And spoon-sized shredded wheat, none. When you shred the wheat for better toasting, it tastes great naturally. So it goes against our grain to add sugar, or even salt. And now there's Nabisco Shredded Wheaten Bran, the first brand cereal with no added sugar or salt. Nabisco! President of Haiti, Jean-Claude Duvalier, called off a military parade today so his troops could guard the capital, which is now under a state of siege. Richard Schlesinger reports on the situation in Port-au-Prince. Day one of President Jean-Claude Duvalier's state of siege. Elite policemen in Port-au-Prince tried to force shopkeepers to open their stores. Normally, Saturday is a heavy shopping day. Today, most of the stores in the central business district of the capital were shut. Overnight, stores were looted and today had armed guards posted outside. There are reports five people were killed, but doctors at the local hospital said they are under orders not to talk. Despite the demonstrations which have racked this country for more than two months, the government does not feel it is in jeopardy. It doesn't have a lot of meanings because the government has a majority that are with the president, Jean-Claude. But on the streets of Port-au-Prince, some people tell a different story. One man would only talk to us away from the troops, and only if we did not photograph him. The Haitian people are known to be very spiritual, docile people, but there comes a point where uh, they cannot uh, accept things as they are anymore. The government says during the state of siege, Haitians will still have the right to hold political demonstrations as long as they remain within the law, according to a government spokesman. And President Duvalier has demonstrated he can mount a very effective show of force if he feels he has to. And the word from the presidential palace is Duvalier is here to stay. I understand that he is president for life. Richard Schlesinger, CBS News, Port-au-Prince. Democratic Congressman John Murtha of Pennsylvania will join the Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Richard Lugar as co-chairman of the 19-member delegation that will go to uh, the Philippines next week to observe the presidential elections there. That word today from the White House, and as it was being made, Lugar said our role is to support the democratic process. There was a denial today of an odd rumor that's been circulating in the Philippines, and Bill Redeker has more on that. 
For the past couple of weeks, rumors have persisted that Imelda Marcos, the politically ambitious wife of the president, might replace him on the ballot at the 11th hour. But today, at the presidential palace, journalists were told to ignore such speculation. This story, or shift of presidential candidates, is completely false. Marcos said he had never seen such a dirty campaign, but pledged the cooperation of the army should he lose and have to vacate the presidency. The entire armed forces uh, will uh, support uh, a legitimately elected uh, president, whoever he may be. But the leadership of the military is extremely loyal to Marcos, and many doubt that his generals would permit a change. Marcos' opponent, Corazon Aquino, continued to draw massive crowds today. She warned the president that should he defraud her of victory, Filipinos won't stand for it. I hate to think of what will happen because a frustrated and an angry uh, people might resort to violence. As the campaign enters its final days, the question of what will happen after the polls close seems to have become the main issue. Aquino says that if Marcos rigs the election, she will lead peaceful demonstrations. Those demonstrations could turn violent. CBS News has learned that both moderate and radical political activists here have made contingency plans that include the possible use of armed force. Bill Redeker, CBS News, Manila. The Conservative Political Action Conference wound up its convention in Washington today. The Conservatives just agreed about a few things, such as presidential candidates, but they all joined in cheering a new hero of the right, Joseph Savimbi, who is in Washington lobbying for aid for his guerrillas against the government of Angola. Deborah Potter has the story. They stood and they shouted their support for Savimbi, the Angolan rebel leader who's become the darling of the American conservative movement. And I pay you my tribute. I follow you and pray for you and thank God for you. The debate over aiding Savimbi's rebels has been called an ideological Super Bowl. And last night's dinner had all the trappings of the big game. From the marching band to the cheering section, roaring approval when Savimbi asked for help. Southern Africa will go Moscow. Unless we resist, unless we stop them in Angola. The Conservatives have made support for Savimbi a political litmus test, and this was a chance for would-be Republican candidates to show they're on the team. We support the free people of Angola who are fighting for liberty and independence. Your cause is our cause. It is time and past time that we Americans should organize ourselves to give real assistance Jonas Savimbi. Real assistance means real weapons. Some administration officials wish the right wing would pipe down. The president wants to send Savimbi some covert aid, but as one official here put it, the more they shout about it, the harder it is for us to do anything. Deborah Potter, CBS News, the State Department. I think that it's eminently clear that you don't help parents learn to be parents by taking their children away. They say a new roof is a big deal. Messy. Expensive. Dangerous. But Goodyear said, try and top this. And Goodyear developed a synthetic roofing that simply rolls on and seals tight with a hot air blower. It's fast, easy, and economical for schools, factories, and buildings anywhere. And it's waterproof, weatherproof. So let it rain. And remember, what they say doesn't always wash. Goodyear. This is a decaffeinated coffee bean. And if you don't know how your coffee gets decaffeinated, you could be leaving a lot to chance because practically every coffee gets decaffeinated unnaturally. But not this one. It's naturally decaffeinated for pure coffee taste. Just read the label. If they don't tell you it's naturally decaffeinated, chances are they use something unnatural. Nescafe decaf. Taste your way naturally. President Reagan today ordered budget cuts of nearly $12 billion to comply with the new Graham-Rudman balanced budget law. Military spending will be cut by almost 5%, domestic spending by more than 4%.
Those cuts take effect March 1st. The president's also preparing the fiscal 1987 budget that he will send to Congress on Wednesday. And in his weekly radio broadcast today, Mr. Reagan again promised no Social Security cuts, no new taxes, and what he called modest but steady growth in defense spending. Once again today, striking meat packers at the Hormel Company plant in Austin, Minnesota, tried to stop their replacements from going to work. Police say that the strikers vandalized cars and blocked roads leading to the plant. One person was arrested. Hormel says that the plant operated on a limited basis as some replacement workers stayed away because of the demonstration. For years, the federal government and various state and local agencies have grappled with the problem of who cares for a child when authorities decide its parents cannot or will not. Some such children are put under supervision of various agencies, but most of the time, federal and state governments simply pay so-called foster parents to take care of them. Lately, critics have begun to ask, is there a better way? And this week, Betty Ann Bowser has been looking into that. Diane Tomlinson is 19 and has been in foster care all of her life, waiting for a family to adopt her. I'm tired of going from home to home to home, you know, and trying to get used to this family, and then you got to leave again and try to... Now she has a family of her own. Her son Jerome, like his mother, is in foster care. Together, Diane and Jerome cost the state of New York more than $40,000 a year. Nationwide, nearly 300,000 children are in foster care at an annual cost of nearly $3 billion. Critics claim that much of that money could be better spent on keeping kids out of foster care. If we put the resources into trying to preserve a family structure, we'd do better for the kids, we'd do better for the families, and we'd do better for, for taxpayers. The federal government requires states to provide preventive services, including housing, daycare, help in the home, whatever can reasonably be done to keep poor families facing the prospect of foster care together. But getting preventive services can mean wading through an ocean of red tape. In New York City alone, nearly half of those who qualify for preventive services can't get them. You grab it, Mom. Four-year-old Saida Ocampo would probably be in a foster home today if her mother had not sued the city and state to get preventive services. Last year, Stephanie Ocampo's right leg had to be amputated. When she asked the city for help in caring for Saida, she was told the little girl belonged in foster care. She continued to demand and finally got help at home. The children don't ask to be brought here. We bring them here, so we owe them a certain amount of um, fulfillment. Make a toy with us? Saida spends every day at a community-based daycare center where poor, abused, and homeless children mix with children of the wealthy. There, poor families receive counseling, housing assistance, food, and education. I think that it's eminently clear that you don't help parents learn to be parents by taking their children away. Experts agree foster care can be damaging to children. The effects are devastating. There are several studies show that kids uh, develop serious psychological problems that they didn't have before they came into foster care because of the impermanence of that kind of life. People who administer the foster care system admit it has problems. And that means taking a national bureaucracy and just making it simple. If I've been in the field 18 years and don't understand all the regulations and all the nuances of this system, then a family in desperate trouble isn't going to easily know where and how to get help. But change comes slowly to a national bureaucracy. Meanwhile, Stephanie and Saida Ocampo are trying very hard not to fall through the cracks. Hold on. Betty Ann Bowser, CBS News, New York. But it wasn't long that something went wrong and I found myself down on the ground. Now let it be said that I'd rather... Why change a good thing? That's what I asked when Oldsmobile redesigned the Delta 88. Oh, then I drove it. Wait till you see how it handles. It's front wheel drive, too. But inside, plenty of room to stretch. Our Delta 88 is the family car that didn't forget the family. Some things never change. Borrow the car, Dad? <laughs> Some things never change. There is a special feeling in Oldsmobile. There are lots of furnaces you can choose for your home. But for the most efficient energy, forget all but the gas furnaces. 
And to cut energy costs further, consider only the high efficiency gas furnaces. Of those, only one has advanced pulse technology, the Lennox Pulse Furnace. It will make your heating more efficient. Take it from Dave Lennox. You can save a lot of gas with a pulse. Had a boy, Dave. Gas, America's best energy value. I don't want some wimpy tasting cereal. If you want bushels of taste, fruitful bread. I don't want some itty bitty taste. Peaches, raisins, apples, dates. Fruitful bread. Bushels of flavor swimming in the plates. Fruitful brand has bushels of taste. High fiber Kellogg's Fruitful Brand. We call it fruitful because it's packed with bushels of taste. Bushels and bushels and bushels of taste in Kellogg's Fruitful Brand. Bushels of taste. In the old days, cowboys out on the range had to entertain themselves when work was done, which probably explains why sitting around the campfire, eating and telling lies became such a favorite cowboy pastime. Well, no one is quite sure how that evolved into poetry, but apparently it did. And this week in Nevada, Nadine Berger got an earful. The love affair between America and the cowboy is a century old. This cowboy, Niall Henderson, wants the romance to continue. Cowboys got class. We're simple and proud. Independent and quiet, we stand out in the crowd. So don't be too quick to put all us cowboys down, because every once in a while, we all get to town. Henderson and 150 other cowboys write poetry about life on the range. And this weekend, they brought their rhyming diaries to Elko, Nevada, home of the gathering of cowboy poets. PhDs and ranch hands alike took in American folklore and did away with some myths. Cowboys and, and poetry do go together. How come you write cowboy poetry? <laughs> How come you breathe? Well, it's, it's the way you can express yourself. A way of putting down history for the people that follow us. I guessed I'd try to rope a calf and still announce the show. They came with poems about cow punching and bronco busting, about old buckaroos and new urban cowboys, and they were at home. There's a closeness here that I don't feel anywhere else. We, we people of the ranches are in a minority now. The cowboy persona is, uh, is uh, crucial to the American self-image. And many think a symbol of what's still right and true about America. The lifestyle that I have and other cowboys have, you see life in a different set of eyes. He hopes his children think so too. And he looked at Dad and he... I think back a few years to when I was a boy. My dad bought me a horse instead of a toy. And he taught me something when I got bucked down. Not to lay there and whimper, but get up off the ground. So when trouble springs up every once in a while, I think back to my dad and I quietly smile. I don't turn my back or run off to hide. I just get up off the ground and I finish the ride. Nadine Berger, CBS News, Elko, Nevada. <laughs> well, that's the news. Bob Schaefer, CBS News, New York. Good night. You're on your way. The world is opening its door. Dear Dad, just got back from my interview with Dow. Sounds like my kind of research. Finding new ways to grow more food, ways to help sick people. I'm going to go for it, Dad. And I'm going to try to make you proud. Yes, you can make a difference in what tomorrow brings. Love, David. Today's Equitable is more than insurance. We're one of America's top real estate investors. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. We're also America's leading manager of pension and retirement funds. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. Our 9,000 agents can help bring you financial security. What we do for major corporations, we can do for you. Your key to financial opportunity. Hi, I'm Harry Crosby. Join us as the stars keep shining at the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am here on CBS Sports. This is CBS. The TV8 News, live at 6, next.
You got to remodel. But you're waiting for that really big sale, right? Like the one in this Payless Cashway Circular, store-wide with low once-a-year kind of savings? Like this Emerson Waste Disposer, only $47.49. A third horsepower model, now just $32.99. This Air Care Bath Fan, just $59.99. Or others, only $8.99. Well, the home remodeling sale starts Sunday at Payless Cashways. Relax, yours is coming this week. Don't do it yourself with ours. Payless Cashways. We interrupt the news to bring you the news. Good news! I'm Larry. I'm Barry. Barry's standing by. What's going on, Barry? It's our soft shell sale at Taco John's. Oh. Every day, all this week, get two soft shells at $1.59. Every day? Every day, now through Sunday. Well, there it is, folks. Two soft shells at $1.59 all hey, this week. Hey, invite all your friends out for soft shells. Yeah. I invited all my friends, but they were both busy. Oh, you'd think a guy would want get to get two soft shells just $1.59 now soft through soft Sunday at all Taco on. John's restaurants in Des Moines, Ames, and now in Ankeny. Stop wild cane from running wild and take care of 33 weeds and grasses before they start with Eradicane Extra. We're TV8. We bring Iowa It's 6 o'clock, and now Rick Swalwell, Ann Hawkins, Dave Dirks, and Heidi Soliday. This is TV8 News Live at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. It's time for the Des Moines City Council to make some tough decisions on funding for the city's tourist attractions. That message came across loud and clear as council members got their first look at a balanced budget for the city. TV8's Allison Gilman reports. At this morning's Des Moines City Council meeting, members got the harsh news in black and white from city manager Cy Carney. In an outline of his upcoming balanced budget report for the next fiscal year, Carney recommends that funding for city tourist attractions take a dramatic shift. Under that plan, financial support from the city would go to the Blank Park Zoo, scheduled to open in May, and the Botanical Center. City subsidies for tourist attractions comes from the hotel motel tax, expected to generate $1.85 million this year. About $300,000 of that is earmarked for the zoo and the botanical center. The direct city operations such as the zoo and the botanic center, which operate as a deficit, those things should receive the hotel motel tax money first. Council made it very clear they're not pleased with the Science Center, Civic Center, and, and uh, Arts Center loss of revenue, but they understood that we need to cover city operations first. The Des Moines Arts Center, the Civic Center, and the Science Center are privately owned. The city subsidizes part of their operating expenses. Carney says the private sector must step in to cover the loss of city dollars for those attractions. But some council members say the well is dry. It's a little unrealistic, I think, to... Uh to say that it can be picked up easily by the private sector. They don't have the money to give. And I know that the private sector is being hit very hard with requests to pick up so many things, uh, so many people services that are not being funded by the federal government. You know, everything goes to the private sector and there's a limit. Carney estimates the Blank Park Zoo will lose about $200,000 next fiscal year, and the Botanical Center will lose 90000 more. If those estimates turn out to be high, Carney says the extra money would go to the other three privately owned attractions. If the city council adopts Carney's recommendation, the Civic Center would lose about $120,000, the Art Center about $75,000, and the Science Center $25,000. Carney says city subsidies make up a large portion of the Civic Center and Science Center budgets, and the loss of that money might send them scrambling to make ends meet. Allison Gilman, TV8 News. Carney will present council members with a 150-page budget recommendation in mid-February. After a public hearing in early March, the council will vote on those recommendations. The manager of the Hormel plant up in Austin, Minnesota, said today the facility was under siege. For the second day in a row, strikers parked cars and trucks in front of entrances to the plant, effectively blocking replacement workers trying to get in. A few workers did manage to get to work finally, and the plant resumed limited production. Police moved in this morning after there were some tires slashed on cars and other car vandalism. One man was arrested. The National Guard is standing by if any more trouble develops. And that Minnesota strike is now affecting business here in Iowa. Today, the managers of two hy V stores and one Fairway grocery store in Newton started pulling Hormel products off their shelves. There isn't even a Hormel plant in Newton, but the local United Auto Workers 997 asked for the action, and they threatened to set up informational pickets at the stores if there wasn't any cooperation. Store managers complied with the request, saying they wanted to avoid a possible confrontation. Hormel products will remain off the shelves in Newton until the Minnesota situation is resolved. The UAW has set up a picket line as a champion spark plug, 
plug company in Burlington. 480 workers there are off the job. More than 2,200 champion workers around the country went on strike when their three-year contract expired. Company officials and union leaders say they are way apart on negotiating wages, cost of living allowances, and holiday benefits. Deere and company officials say Iowa is in the running with two other states as the possible site of a new business that would employ as many as 200 people. Deere is planning on consolidating its 12 retail credit offices into, into one central office to save expenses and increase efficiency. West Des Moines would likely be the site of the construction for the $3 billion John Deere credit union. Company officials declined to say which two other states Iowa is competing against. The credit company provides financing for farmers who buy from Deere. Two Iowa optometrists are safe in Florida this evening after a political uprising in Haiti forced them to abandon a medical mission there. Mark Mather of Muscatine and Henry Noyes of Grandview were in Haiti on an outreach mission called VOSH, V-O-S-H, Voluntary Optometric Services for Humanity. The two were treating children in orphanages and mission schools on Tuesday and Wednesday, but on Thursday they were told by the U.S. Embassy to stay in their rooms. Mather says he saw fires burning in the streets in front of his hotel window, and another person in his group saw a Haitian citizen shot to death. The two received word that they had a chance to leave the country with a group of doctors from Indiana, so they seized the opportunity, and they arrived in Florida safe and sound last night. When we come back, we've got some news for you about Groundhog Day tomorrow. And we'll take a look at Kaleida Quiz, the nation's largest trivia exercise up in Ames. Stay with us. Breaking for the wagon, Master. Go ahead, Mark. Pull up down by the gate, will you? Filling my pickup tank will save me a trip back to the house. Looks like we're saving your dad a trip somewhere, too, huh? We got you all taken care of, Mark. Tank's all full, tires all hard. That's a big 10-4 wagon, Master. You take care. Keep it on the double nickel. Bye-bye for sure, Mark. Catch you later. The Cynics boys are heading west. In the West, when you had something of value, you put your brand on it. It was more than a sign of ownership. It was a symbol of pride. At U.S. West Direct, we still believe in that tradition. We publish the West's complete yellow pages, and we're proud of it. So 35 million times a year, we lay down our brand on the West's best directory. It's part of our heritage. U.S. West Direct, publisher of the West's best yellow pages. This is one side of surgery most people don't see. That's why it's good to know you can trust the skill and experience of Charter Surgical Staff. I'm proud to supervise a team that's caring and capable. After 25 years of experience, I know that personalized care does make a difference. Charter Surgical Team works with over 150 doctors to perform general, outpatient...